We just got on site, client's property, Choctaw County, Alabama. 300 acres, first year thin. This is a textbook opportunity to show everything that can be done with a well-managed timber stand. I mean, there's just so many options that we have. Got a great landowner to work with. He's got defined objectives. He knows exactly what he wants to do and how he wants to do it. My job as a consultant is help him manage his expectations, manage his budget, where it's not overwhelming. If you look at the whole piece of property, it, it can get a little much. So we're taking it bits and pieces, a chunk at a time, set reasonable objectives where you can reach them, and then, man, enjoy it. Well, really how this all started back in the early 90s when I graduated from college and started managing property, I was looking strictly at wildlife. And one of the first pieces of property I managed had a forester who's now a good friend of mine named Lee Bass. He was looking at strictly timber. I was looking at strictly wildlife. And we butted heads quite a bit in the beginning. Now over the years we figured out a way to reach a happy medium where we can optimize timber production for economic return and also we can maximize wildlife habitat for great hunting opportunities. This is when it starts getting good, first six months after a thin. You know, some things, you have to take a couple steps back before you can move forward. And I'll give it to you, right after a timber thin, it's not the most beautiful thing in the world, but y'all face it, this is the worst that this property is gonna look for the next 20 years. For well, the bonus, the, the gimme under these pines that typically you don't have under hardwoods is managing the native vegetation. You've got so many options at your disposal with fire, chemical release, strip disking under these pines where you can create virtually a food plot under your pine timber. This is what you're looking for after that first timber thin. You've got sunlight hitting the ground. We've got honeysuckle, blackberry, panic grass, ragweed, greenbrier, and this little plant right here, partridge pea. It's a native legume. It's 15.9% protein just as it is. It's perfect. This is exactly what you're looking for after that thin. And y'all, if you're wondering how I know it's 15.9%, it's real simple. I got a Ziploc bag. I took some stems, I took some leaves, put it in there and sent it to Auburn to have a forage analysis done on it. That's something that you can do on your own property to see what the food value content and the protein content of the native vegetation on your place is. A deer needs 16 to 17 percent protein for optimum body growth and antler development. And it's great to have soybean fields or iron clay cow peas that's going to bump it up, good clover, in the high 20s and low 30s, but consistently we need to give them 16 to 17 percent. 70 to 80 percent of their diet is native vegetation. They're not a cow. They're not going to go to a food plot and just sit there and graze and graze and graze. They're walking around through the woods picking a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And I know Stretch has touched on this up in Ohio with old field style habitats with high quality, high protein native vegetation. We have it down here too. This is common ragweed. And you can see right there where the tops have been nipped out. It's about 11% to 12% protein, but also all of these seed heads right there, that is great turkey and quail food right there. So you're feeding your deer by browsing on the leaves, and then the seed production, you're feeding the quail and turkeys. It's a great native plant already in the seed bed. All we needed to do was give it an opportunity to grow and fertilize it. Perfect food plot. Look at all that nipped off right there. But one thing that you can do that helps your timber and helps the native vegetation, there's been studies shown that if you apply 100 pounds of triple 13 to the acre, 
it can more than double the protein content of your native vegetation. Let's take a look at this tree and it is a perfect example of why and when we harvest for the first time. If you look at the center of this tree and start going out toward the edge, you can see the individual growth rings which indicates a year in the life of this pine. The first six to eight years, this tree is growing great, it's putting on a lot of wood. Once it gets around 9 to 15, it starts slowing down, and you can see these rings are getting tighter and tighter. Well, all that is is the crowns of these trees are getting closed. They're not getting as much sunlight, not getting as much nutrients. So the timber stops growing. Wildlife food production starts to diminish. So this is a proper time to go into a pine plantation for that first thinning. And the key to this is well managed, whether you're talking about a fish pond, a food plot, or a timber stand. No management is the worst management. We've been saying that for years. So looking at these pine trees, like them or not, they're here. They're in the south. It's our cash crop, just like corn and soybeans are in the Midwest. You need to figure out how to manage what you have to the best of your ability. a place I go tuck back in the pines where a green field grows my own little paradise I'm thankful for this land and the life that it provides see the measure of a man is what he leaves behind oh, oh take what you need and pass it on Sometimes you just got to get on old Chuck. Let him loosen up a little bit. I am what I am. <laughs> if you sit me down, I'm going to talk like this. <laughs> in trails, in pine plantations, nothing can be better. That would have been good if he hadn't have just bulldozed the camera. <laughs>